Good evening. My name is Mary Dito Swinton, and I'm the chair of the Community Commission on Police Oversight. And I want to welcome all of those who are observing our meeting tonight in person or monitoring our meeting broadcast. At this time, I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Monday, April 15th, and ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Commissioner Lohr. Present. Commissioner Shanfield. Present. Commissioner Olson. Present. Commissioner Newman is absent. Commissioner Clement. Present. Commissioner Gurian Sherman. Present. Commissioner Peterson is absent. Commissioner Sturm. Present. Commissioner Vorpal is absent. Commissioner Williams Johnson is absent. Commissioner Smith. Present. Vice Chair Reeves. Present. Chair Dido Swinton. Present. There are nine members present. Thank you. Let the record reflect that we do have a quorum and we'll now proceed to our agenda. Commissioners, the agenda for this evening's meeting is before us. This is our first meeting since last month's quote unquote reset with the city administration and I believe the agenda reflects continuing improvements over the past month. I'm not aware of any proposed amendments to the agenda so let me ask if there are any amendments to the agenda from commissioners. Oh, I see. Thank you. Commissioner Gurry and Sherman. Yes, I'm wondering if I'd like to make a, a amendment to put on financial matters um, uh, including uh, payment for stipends and uh, also uh, the training that's happening tomorrow. What you want to talk about the stipends? I for one haven't in four months received my stipend and uh, I want to know if other commissioners have put in their paperwork and are in my position and have not received stipends or if they have put in their paperwork and have received them and I'm in a minority of one. I'd like to know that. I'd also like to know, uh, it, and we might be covering it, but whether if we do the CGIS training, is that going to be paid uh, as a mandatory training even if we took it on our own or only if we go to the training in person tomorrow? So that's why I'm asking for uh, financial matters agenda. I don't think it'll take long. Would you object if we ab address it during the chair report? No, I would not. As long as we are allowed to address it, I think that's a good compromise. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And training, can we address that during interim director Amini's report? I have no objection to that as long as we can cover it. Thank okay. you. Okay, so uh, when I forget to ask about it, just raise your hand and ask. Will do. Thank you. Are there, is there any other discussion or recommendations to amend the agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Vice Chair Reeves, yes, to approve the agenda. I'll restate a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Thank you. It's been moved and second to approve. And uh, um, as presented, uh, we will, is there any discussion? No. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote. The clerk will call the roll on the motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you. Commissioner Lohr. Yes. Commissioner Shanfield. Yes. Commissioner Olson. Yes. Commissioner Newman is absent. Commissioner Clement. Yes. Commissioner Gurian Sherman. Yes. Commissioner Peterson is absent. Commissioner Sturm? Yes. Commissioner Vorpal is absent. Commissioner Williams Johnson is absent. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Vice Chair Reeves? Yes. Chair Dido Swinton? Yes. There are nine ayes. Thank you. The ayes have it and the agenda is adopted as presented. Thank you very much. Next, we will have acceptance of our minutes from our regular meeting on March 11th. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? Commissioner Smith, so moves. Vice Chair Reeves, second. Thank you. We have a proper motion to accept those minutes. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? 
I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have, I don't see a hard copy of the minutes, and for some reason I wasn't able to pull them down uh, online. Uh, Madam Chair, we can certainly um, attempt to send an electronic copy around right now. Um, don't have the ability to produce a hard copy. Do We might have one in the agenda packet. I didn't. Yeah. I looked in line. In the packet that's in front of you, you should have the agenda packet. It doesn't happen. Oh, yes. No. We'll send them around electronically. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion about the minutes from March? Seeing and hearing none, um, can we have our please? Commissioner Lord. Excuse me. How can we have a vote when we all haven't had a chance to read the minutes? Can we postpone the vote on the minutes until we have a chance to read them? I think is that? All I know is I usually am able to pull them down. I wasn't, and usually we have a hard copy, and I was expecting to have a hard copy. So I haven't had a chance to read the minutes. I don't think we should be taking a vote so unless we all have an opportunity to read the minutes. Is Madam that Chair, if it's, if it's the goal of the body, we can certainly put this to the end of the agenda. And in that time, the clerks will have a chance to get this out to the body, if that's, if that's helpful to the body. I would entertain a motion to table this until the next meeting. And we just approved this meeting and next meetings. So we're certain that everybody has actually read them. I second that. I, I didn't make the motion. I said I would entertain one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I make a motion to table the uh, March minutes to the May meeting. Second. Is there any discussion? There's been a motion to table the vote on the March meeting minutes until May. Any discussion? I don't see any. Um, can we have a vote, please? Commissioner Lohr. Yes. Commissioner Shanfield? Yes. Commissioner Olson? Um, I actually wasn't ready to, I, I think a couple of us uh, were this not ready to, to go to the vote. Oh, what did you, I was able to pull the, the meeting table. minutes up okay. online. You can, and uh, yes. I have them up too. We've, we've already started to vote, so you just okay. vote your conscience at this yes. point. Thank you. Commissioner Clement? Yes. Commissioner Gurian Sherman? Yes. Commissioner Sturm? No. Commissioner Smith? No. Vice Chair Reeves? No. Chair Dito Swinton? No. There are five ayes and four nays. Uh, thank you. The ayes have it. And the motion to approve the minutes has been tabled until May until our May 13th meeting. Thank you. The next order of business is um, discussion beginning with the chair's report. And my report is very brief. I, my report's very brief. I'll just remind those who have um, work group reports to submit that they are due on May 3rd. And we also um, added to the chair report a discussion about receiving stipends. Is there, are there other commissioners who have submitted their forms and not received stipends for their meetings and trainings? Commissioner Sturm. I was going to say, I think all the, all the ones I was directed to send to former Director Jefferson probably just fell off. And I'm not going to bother resubmitting them, so I'm, I'm assuming that's where they all went because I'm I'm missing like four, three or four. Okay. I got last I got last meeting stipend, but none of the stuff from Jefferson. Okay. Thank you. And I understand 
this is your situation as well, Commissioner Gurry and Sherman. I submitted my uh, year, my stipends for the year of 2023 on December 27th. Uh, did all the rigmarole to be yeah. processed as a contractor, even though we're volunteers, and uh, <clears throat> was told in February that uh, everything had been processed, everything was fine. And uh, at the uh, March, uh, February meeting, after the meeting when I brought this up, uh, former OPCR Director John Jefferson said he signed off on it, uh, and uh, he seemed perplexed, and uh, were two months after that. I seem to be the only commissioner uh, that hasn't received a stipend. Um, so as I put out an email about it today and said I'm not looking for uh, any, um, any requirements as to why it happened, I've done what I've had to do, but I'm not taking any more excuses, and I fully expect a check to be cut and made available for me to pick up within a week or by this Friday. I think waiting four months uh, for a stipend is ridiculous. It's the easiest thing that, that can be done. And for some reason, you can all speculate, I'm the one that doesn't have a stipend check. So I would expect either a check that I can pick up by this Friday or a date when that check will be available for me to pick up. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Clark. If I might just respond to that. I, I can't explain why stipends may or may not have been given to any of the individual commissioners, and I certainly heard Commissioner Sturm identify that he too has had um, some issues in this regard. I will just acknowledge what we all know is there's been a transition in terms of the administrative support for this board. I'll take personal responsibility on following up with this item. It may require me reaching out to each of you individually to find out the status. I do not have access to necessarily email communications that have been uh, in advance or in prior months, but I certainly will be happy to work with each one of you individually to identify what stipends remain unpaid and need to be processed by the city. I will do what I can to expedite that. I can't make any promises on a certain date, certain Commissioner Gurry and Sherman, but you have my assurance tonight in this meeting. I will follow up and start that first thing in the morning tomorrow when I return to the office. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Are there any other concerns about having received or not received your stipends? No. Okay, thank you. And as far as the question about CJIS, CJIS training and whether or not that is being covered by a stipend that we normally get for training, but this was done online, is should we sub who should I be looking at to ask this question first of Ma all <laughs> Madam Chair why don't I try and take this in as well and the interim director I mean he can certainly back me up uh, on this I think this is another area where I will uh, start an investigation tomorrow morning in terms of just stipends and payments and trainings and all of those and get back with you my assumption would be if the city is requiring you to complete a training as part of your duties of this body that we're reimbursing you for that training it wouldn't matter if you were doing it because we provided the training or because you took the time on your own to complete that training. We require it um, as a part of the uh, expectation of being appointed to this board, and I assume that's going to fall within that um, payment. Thank you very much. Are there any questions about the extensive chair report for tonight? No. Seeing, Madam, Madam yes. Chair, the only other thing is uh -oh. you, we don't need to spend a lot of time, but just because last time we did vote to oh, identify yes. all the dates and times of meetings for the rest of this year, we put a calendar in your agenda packet, uh, also online, just to remind everyone of the dates and times of regular meetings now through December. And so hopefully that uh, you'll add that to your own personal calendars. We're going to be uploading that for public notice and access purposes into LIMS. Um, but just to remind folks that we, we voted on that last time and wanted to make sure you all remembered that those dates and times have now been set. Thank you. And commissioners, it is on the back of the meeting norms page. We don't have that. You don't have it. Some commissioners don't have that. Okay. But that is the, the uh, that concludes the chair report. But I will back up a little bit since we're going to go into um, the rest of the reports and discussion and questions to remind each of us of our agreed upon meeting norms and they are meeting materials will be shared 
on time. Suggested agenda items will be shared in advance of meetings. We will read any shared materials prior to the meeting, participate in discussion, ask questions for understanding, implement time limits on presentations, discussions, etc., respect opinions of other commissioners, abide by decisions of the commission, avoid personal comments, speak one at a time, and when recognized, be concise and notify the chair when a meeting or training absence is necessary. Okay, and like I said, there's no action in my report, so unless there are questions. I do uh, have one oh, question. Who's, where is it? Oh, thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Clement. Clement. <coughs> Excuse me, I've lost my voice a little bit. I, my question is, is that um, I did reapply for the seat for the Ward 5 representative, and I'm wondering when we will know if we were selected to do that so that I can then henceforth plan on attending those, because then May would be my last meeting. So... I'm, just needing to know that information. I'm going to direct that question as well to the city clerk. I'm sorry, could you It's a question that? about uh, those commissioners who have reapplied and when any notifications of yes or no will be received about reappointment. Thank you, Madam Chair. So you'll recall that at the March meeting, I indicated the open appointment process was running from March 1st to 31st. That closed on the 31st just a few weeks ago. Um, that process now will move into uh, getting the qualified applicants into groups for uh, review by council members and the mayor, uh, and they'll be bringing those appointments forward. I would expect that the next step in the process in terms of bringing forward new appointments or reappointments would happen in the next few months. Um, I don't have any other report to offer other than we've closed the nominations process or the open appointments period and are gathering those applications to share with the appointing authorities, the mayor and council, based on uh, which seats make the nominations. Thank you. And just to clarify, you said within the next few months, you meant days or weeks, didn't you? I'm not certain that we're going to in the next few weeks oh. have those done. I will remind everyone you continue to serve until appointments are made. Okay, thank so you. So it's, it's, it's not as if, if that appointment isn't made by the deadline that you stop serving. Members continue to serve until an affinitive, um, action, a affirmative action is taken by the mayor or the council as an appointing authority to replace someone or to reappoint them. Thank you. Commissioner Clement, does that answer your... It does. Okay, thank you. Okay, unless there are any questions about my report, we're going to move on to the next order of business, which is reports. And as always, we'll begin with the monthly report from the Office of Police Conduct Review. And that report will be given by our interim director, Ms. Amini. And we have allotted 30 minutes for this report. Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, oh, I don't have, one second, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I walked away with the wrong report. Um, so OPCR has had a few updates within the last month. Uh, I will start with um, the document that was sent, and uh, hopefully you all have in front of you the OPCR report. I'm yes. sorry. Interim Director Amini, could you speak closer into the microphone? Oh. I'm having a hard time yeah. hearing you. Is this better? Uh, I think you might have to speak even closer. I'm sorry. Okay. How about now? That's better. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Um, well, starting with the report that was sent from OPCR that hopefully will be uh, in front of you. Uh, is uh, the hiring process. We are in the process of uh, rehiring some positions and also modifying some of those positions to best suit the changes within OPCR. Uh, the case manager position is one of them. Uh, that will hopefully be released within the upcoming weeks due to turnover. And then we also have a, a new <coughs> intake investigator position and an administrative staff to assist with the data and data, data requests. We do have uh, meetings with HR coming up this week, so hopefully within the next week, week and a half, we'll have some uh, positions posted online for uh, people to apply. 
Uh, regards to website and reporting dashboards, uh, OPCR related web pages on the City of Minneapolis website have been undergoing month long updates to follow the city ordinance and the changes within the MDHR settlement agreement. And those changes include uh, replacing outdated information, clarifying existing information, and adding certain information that was not previously provided on the websites. Uh, and then I, below I provided some names of, of those websites and, and those changes. And we will expedite uh, the process for making those edits within OPCR's related web pages. We do have a process set, uh, and we have some timelines on what we would like to achieve internally in regards to updating those pages. Um, of those pages that are currently under revision include the complaint review process and the police conduct review panel pages. And then we will be working with uh, Unity Community Mediation Team, or UCMT, to add those community sites and have their information provided on those appropriate websites. Uh, the reporting dashboards, within a couple of weeks, uh, please expect to see an updated complaints received visualization, officer complaint history information, and case routing information, and those links will be provided as dashboards uh, as they are implemented. So we are meeting daily with a data visualization specialist from IT, and we're working on uh, implementing those changes. We're meeting weekly with stakeholders for feedback, uh, and bi-weekly with uh, IA and IT to maintain and further develop both technical data supply chains that feed the visualizations and the business processes that define the data entry and governance pr uh, practices. For intake, uh, intake process was stalled due to recent staff changes. Uh, that intake team continued working on cases and many are now in supervisory review. Additionally, the city attorney's embedded attorney uh, is reviewing intake cases along with myself. And then since the February meeting, intake staff is working on repri reprioritizing the intake queue. So for total complaints filed in 2024, we have, uh, as of April 9th, 55 new cases. The intake queue continues at 160 total as of April 9th. And for planning to address the backlog cases in intake, uh, we currently have one full-time intake investigator with the assistance of two administrative staff that are not, are dividing their time between their regular duties and assisting with uh, intake. One is helping along with the intake process while the other one is focusing more on the front end for uh, opening complaints, sending letters, doing the administrative staff, the administrative tasks that the intake investigator was doing so it frees up more time for her to review the actual cases versus doing the administrative work. Uh, OPCR will soon uh, start focusing on the oldest cases first. So there are 32 legacy cases in Practice Manager. Uh, Practice Manager was the records management system up until February of 2023 when it was then replaced with Axon Standards. So within Practice Manager, there are 32 cases there. Those will uh, reprioritize and go through intake first. Once we have that, depending on the case routing, whether or not they are you know, dismissed for whatever reasons or prelims or admins or referrals, we just don't know yet. Uh, so we will be focusing on those first. And then once those cases are processed, OPCR will shift its focus on dividing its attention and alternating between the oldest cases and the newest cases. Reason for that is to try and expedite catching up to the backlog, but also trying to maintain compliance with what is required of us within the settlement agreement. So within 30 days, intake should have routed a case for, you know, depending on what it is, of course, should have routed the case to whatever disposition within 30 days. So we are trying to tackle both at the same time. So we will hopefully eventually meet in the middle. One investigator um, will focus on new cases and then the new investigator will probably work uh, the older cases within Axon and go from there. Uh, like I said that we, we would, we are anticipating hiring a new intake investigator and of course that also requires training and then the certification, or it's not certification, but the backgrounds also takes time. Uh, so as of April 10th, 2024, there are 24 cases that went through intake stage in OPCR. Three of those cases were sent to coaching. Two cases were sent back for intake for further review. Uh, 19 cases are pending action within OPCR and IA. 
and 18 complaints were filed within March of 2024 with OPCR. So what I mean by 19 cases pending action with, o with from OPCR and IA is that one, when a case is set for dismissal or set for coaching, we send the, those cases to IA um, for them to review and to acknowledge the disposition, and then we are moved forward. Um, we have contact with internal affairs, and that process is working uh, smoothly. So with intake highlights, uh, OPCR is working with city departments on developing policy and procedures for expedited dispositions as allowed by the MDHR settlement agreement, and OPCR is util utilizing their administrative staff to send letters, return phone calls, emails, and update the records management system as cases come in, and incorporating administrative staff allows the intake investigator to focus on the investigative process and less on administrative duties. So I was jumping ahead a little bit. That, that, is, that is our plan moving forward. Uh, for the investigation, uh, the investigation teams are split into two units. One unit is addressing current cases, and then the other unit is addressing the legacy cases. Those legacy cases are referred to the cases within Practice Manager, um, and also some of the, the, the first Axon Standard cases that are around a year old, um, and prioritizing those as well. Um, OPCR is also preparing cases to give to the external investigator contracted by the city. And cases have been identified, and a system is in place to share that information when that contract is approved. That contract, from what I could tell, was approved on April 11th, and that external investigator um, uh, contract is going through final edits and should be posted publicly soon. And that contract holder is Wiley Reber. Um, the OPCR uh, will be the contract manager, which is me. Um, and that contract would only have OPCR related cases moving forward. And the cases will have to pass through a screening process. So a list of parameters agreed upon all parties of cases that can be sent to that external investigator. Uh, they will be shared via SharePoint. So it's, it's a, a secured method of sharing those files. It's also, we can also track it through, through like an audit trail. So we would be able to see when who downloaded what, what was viewed at when, uh, just to make that process as secure as possible. And we will share all the investigative materials that OPCR has to uh, those investigators. So the same expectations that we have for our in-house investigators will be applied to those external investigators. And that is uh, an 18-month contract and can be reviewed within those 18 months. Okay, so open investigations within OPCR. There are 12 that are open within our in-house investigators. Uh, inclu uh, that includes um, 28 for the uh, supervisory review and 19 cases still have to be assigned. Of those 19 cases, some of those cases will go to the external investigator, so that number will drop. Uh, average caseload per investigator is seven. Uh, the plan for addressing the backlog in case uh, of cases in investigations. The administrative investigators team currently consists of five full-time staff members. Two investigators are working on legacy cases and the remaining three investigators are focused on newer cases. OPCR is rolling out an investigative checklist to assign investigators with their caseloads and deadlines. And OPCR will begin that process in the coming weeks. Those checklists will also be applied to the external investigators so we can um, assert that the quality of the investigations will remain the same in, from in-house to the external investigators. Uh, highlights, we continue training new investigators, 16 cases and final supervisor review uh, prior to sending to the review panels. And the, uh, myself have uh, reviewed seven of those cases and are pending final edits as of April 10th. Since April 10th, I've reviewed four more. Uh, so a few over the weekend and one this morning, so that number will, will change. And in terms of final edits, they will, there are two cases pending uh, panel that they are prepared and ready to be uploaded into SharePoint uh, for panel soon. And then for data and research, the data and research team consists of two OPCR staff, including the legal analyst and the program assistant. The team spent a total of 129 hours reporting to 66 
uh, data request in March of 2024. And again, the review panel, it says that there is one case that is pending CCP, CCPO review that is actually two now. Uh, the one from this morning, that one is ready for CCPO. Uh, CGIS certifications must be completed before CCPO panels to attend the review panel session. As of April 10th, there were two CCPO members, but that has actually changed over the weekend. There are now six CCPO uh, commissioners that have completed CGIS. Thank you for doing that. Um, we now have enough to, to restart the panels now that we have six. Um, I, I just want to stress that uh, the more commissioners that, that complete the CGIS review allows you know, more opportunity for everyone to uh, attend those panels and also to relieve the others, because that, that is a lot of work, knowing that there will be 16 cases soon for review. And also, before I for, forget, um, to address the questions in regards to the training, um, and please correct me, uh, Attorney Fussy, if I'm wrong, or, or City Clerk, if you look in the ordinance, uh, 172.60 uh, D subdivision 8 any other relevant training as determined by the Civil Rights Department and, and, I, and this is mandatory training requirements to the extent training is not conc uh, concluded during regular meetings or the Commission members will be compensated $50 for each mandatory session attended so this is relevant training this is uh, important training. CGIS allows you and helps give overview as to uh, how to handle uh, confidential data um, and, and, and data access needs. Of course, you are not going into NPD systems and retrieving that data. We do that for you, but you are still accessing that data. Uh, so that's why uh, we had offered the CGIS training and and because that, that, that was required by the Civil Rights Department, I, I personally don't see why you wouldn't be compensated for that. Um, and when you look at uh, Section 8, at least through my interpretation, it sounds like that, that would apply. So there were some chief decisions and that you could refer to the police discipline decision dashboard. Uh, some decisions were not publish, uh, published to the public website. Uh, MPD is aware of that discrepancy and then they're working to update that website. Um, I do believe that they, they had made some updates today. Um, so there, there should be more to come, but discipline decisions have been published and those are the ones that are um, listed below uh, for the decisions published within 2024. So the review panel highlights, OPCR updated the instruction sheets to match the new panel recommendations form. Uh, that was done uh, a few months ago. I believe that was sent to you in an email. Uh, OPCR, City Attorney's Office, and MPD are working to streamline the notification process for disciplinary decisions. And bi-weekly meetings with the enterprise stakeholders have been established to talk about those discipline decisions. Uh, OPCR is creating templates with suggestions on how to review a case and more information will be available in the coming weeks. I do have that in draft form and I will release that before the first um, panel reconvenes in the following weeks. So I will try my best to make it as detailed as possible with clear instructions. I can um, uh, send it out with a very detailed email of how at least I approach these cases and I'm also getting uh, uh, experiences from other like for example the embedded attorney I'm going to ask him how does he review these cases how have others approached these cases and kind of consolidate those ideas to something that makes sense and then for the CCPO training the use of force training the makeup session is tomorrow there were six CCPO members that did not fully attend the entire training, so we have invited them back. And I just want to also thank uh, MPD for assisting with that scheduling. I know that the training unit has a lot on their plate and they, uh, they are doing the best they can to accommodate this training, so I really appreciate that. 
Uh, and then NACL training. Uh, OPCR is working with the National Association for the Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement to set up training schedule for the CCPO. I met with them on Thursday or Friday of last week, and we have decided the last week of June where they will be able to come out and provide training for you all. We still need to finalize the um, the topics of that training, but topics can include how to approach a case, how to uh, project plan all of your, your duties, and um, talk about priorities or experiences within other commissions within the, the United States and how they handle that so they can give good advice and recommendations on how to move forward with any um, questions that you might have in regards to priority and what is, what is appropriate within the ordinance and what uh, regulations that you or powers that you might have. So we need to finalize that list. I will hope to uh, finalize that by this week, and then they will start creating their trainings uh, for CCPO. And then the Unity Community Mediation Team remains the same. Uh, the locations are still the same. They are still taking complaints from, from the community. Thank, thank you, Ms. Amini. Um, are, before I ask for questions, I'm going to share something that I'm going to try at this meeting because I fear that there are some commissioners who are sitting on their hands and not sharing what they're thinking, so not to call anyone out, but I'm going to try to give everyone a pointed opportunity to ask questions or make comments and I will I'm gonna start on this side of the whatever this thing is called up here um, and I will alternate and uh, next time I'll start down here so thank you Miss Amini um, Commissioner Sturm do you have any questions or comments uh, I was just gonna ask uh, to bring some light onto the data and research I know that's been lost in the shuffle of all the attention I think it would just be helpful for um, the public and for us to know. Can you shed some light on what exactly the, the, the team, they're spending 129 hours on data requests? That seems like important work and we're not really recognizing that or cognizant of that. Sure, thank you, uh, Chair, um, <coughs> Commissioner Peterson. Uh, the amount of hours re uh, revolve around uh, community data requests in general and also Brady requests. So anything that's coming from the county uh, requires a certain amount of information per each case. Sometimes uh, it's case specific, sometimes it's per officer, sometimes it's per a specific time period. And they have deadlines of how quickly we need to respond to those cases. Um, as you can imagine, practice manager is uh, ancient it's the way to pull data is usually manual and there is no efficient way to pull that data through like a Cognos report or it, it's like a statistical analysis tool that's what Cognos is um, it could provide guidance to what cases to look into whereas we could say if it's officer specific we could say show me every case that involves officer X we would then have to go into every single one of those cases manually, download them into our, like a SharePoint or a OneDrive, consolidate cases, and then send them out. Uh, sometimes those cases repeat. If, for example, a Brady request has, like Brady request on day one has Officer X, but Brady request on day two also has Officer X plus one, we can't just share that information from the first one. We would have to pull that information, put that on for data request number two, and then send that out again. So it's, it's a lot of manual labor, and that's why it takes so long for OPCR. And then, of course, the data request from the public can be within a certain time frame or something. Uh, a recent one is, uh, uh, you know, show me a, all the cases that involve policy violation code of conduct, for example. So we'd have to go in pull those, and then again, manually download them, and then send that off to the respective uh, department within the city to then review that, and then send them out. And we only have two people 
uh, right. responsible for, for that process. So the data requests, are they just mostly discipline related or anything OP, OPCR? It could be anything within OPCR and sometimes uh, internal affairs gets those as well. Commissioner Starm, does, uh, is, does that yep. answer you? Okay. Thanks. Thank I'm you. Good. Thank you. Commissioner Lohr. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. You know, the total complaints filed in 24 are listed as 55 as of April 9, and below that we have intake queue of 160 cases. Where does that discrepancy come from? Are those from 23? What, what, what is that queue made up of, if not requests from this year? Right. So the requests are from 2023 and, and older. So there are some cases that are, well, most, most of them are from 2023. There are just a handful of 2022s, and those are part of the legacy cases that I had mentioned within Practice Manager that we will be uh, focusing on first. So does the 160 represent the total backlog? The total backlog of intake cases, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gurry, were you finished, Commissioner Lord? Thank you. Commissioner Gurry and Chairman. I started that way and I'm moving this way. Thank you. I appreciate your report. Um, one thing that we didn't do at the beginning of the meeting, which I would hope we could do now, is to have staff uh, in the room introduce themselves, both in OPCR, IA, uh, in, at the city manager level, ALIFA, so that we can know who's in the room and hearing these comments. I'm going to ask if we can wait until uh, uh, interim director Amini's report is over because her time is ticking down and she's now at 23 minutes of her 30 minutes. So we will we'll do that afterward. Okay, I'd like to start with the staff turnover. Uh, if can you tell us the number of staff that are in OPCR total? Twelve. And of those twelve, how many have turned over uh, since the firing of uh, Civil Rights Director Gillespie and the forced resignation of Mr. Jefferson? There was one who had put in their notice before uh, and then had left the week of. Um, and then there was one individual who was in intake who had transferred from OPCR to internal affairs if if I'm if I, I think that transfer occurred before the turnover within the directors or that excuse me that transfer was initiated before the transfer of or the the movement within the directors um, and then one has left since the turnover of the directors within civil rights and how many are any on personal leave or um, not working right now or for any other reason? No. So everybody else is on board? Yes. And so do you have a full complement of the 12 positions that you have? Yeah. Like I had mentioned before, that case manager uh, that is now vacant, that individual had left last week. Um, and then the intake investigator who had then moved from internal or from from OPCR to internal affairs that is now or will be vacant soon uh, because of that transfer there is a 30 day window so once that 30 day window is done that will then be posted for your next OPCR report could you please list the names of the staff their titles and their roles whether they're doing intake or investigations so that we can put names to what the responsibilities are I appreciate that you've identified the staff and what they're doing but I have no idea who they are yeah. and would like to make sure that in each report we're seeing that uh, so that hopefully we're getting familiar with those people so is that something we can expect in the next report yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. Okay. Uh, also, uh, back in um, March, we had uh, questions that we wanted to have addressed in April. I wonder if you have the answers to those. I do. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, so from the previous meetings, I saw that uh, hopefully one of these questions will be, uh, was already answered to extend the, uh, the commissioners to get more time uh, within the CCPO. Um, City Clerk uh, Casey Carl had mentioned that they will stay on until there is uh, movement within uh, council. Uh, the review panel forms, those were, are in final revisions. Um, 
there was mention that the review panel forms was modified to have different or have the same or different officers on the same form. Uh, we can't actually do that. So unfortunately, each form will have a different officer per case. The reason being is because we can't have another officer's actions and potential recommendations from the CCPO in another person's file. So that's why we have to continue with the separation of officers. So if there is one officer that has four allegations for one case, those four allegations will stay on that document. But we can't have Officer A and Officer B in the same one. Uh, that is the, the only major uh, modification to that form. Um, the, there was another point in discussion uh, of whether or not uh, the public websites um, are accessible to CCPO the, in terms of the decisions, the discipline decisions. There is a current delay in posting, uh, but they are working to resolve that issue. So hopefully that issue um, we will have an answer to that by the next meeting. Uh, for the re review panel updates, I know that there was discussions about uh, documents describing how long a panel will take, the number of pages, how many BWCs or media resources and how long that would take. That is part of the draft that I am uh, going to have at the beginning of each panel packet. So when we restart the panels, that will, that will be available to you. We will have uh, the BWC is compiled in terms of minutes or hours, and then we can further separate that as to whether or not it's a BWC or like a Facebook post or anything like that. We will be able to differentiate that as well. Uh, the priority documents. Uh, what documents should you start when you do a review panel? Uh, that is something that I, I just brief briefly mentioned, getting um, recommendations from others who spend a lot of time reviewing these. How do, they ta how do they tackle that? How is that different from when I do it? And then kind of consolidating that, keeping in mind that you probably don't have three screens available in front of you like I do, but to have something that is doable and, and uh, equitable with one screen. Thank you. Could yeah. I follow up on that? When, uh, when we're in the panels, uh, are we allowed to have our screens up and be reviewing documents and talking about them as we discuss the cases? Absolutely. Okay, yes. great. Wonderful. I appreciate those answers. I look forward to the update and uh, about the delay. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the website and the report uh, dashboards, uh, can you now say that um, uh, the Civil Rights Department and OPCR are in compliance with the OPCR CCPO ordinance and the MDHR consent decree in terms of the dashboard and website? Well, OPCR cannot say if we are in compliance or not. That is uh, an ALIFA question. Um, we are trying our best to get all of those websites and the documents um, up in time for them to review. But in order to know what to put on the website, you have to know what to comply with. So right. based on what you've put on the websites, do you feel you're in compliance uh, with the ordinance and with the website? We are uh, and, and the consent decree, sorry. Right. We are trying our best to satisfy the, the requirements. Personally, we, I, I believe we are trying our best to do so. Okay. Uh, just going back to Commissioner Lohr's question on uh, intake cases, uh, you, there are 160 cases in intake. How many cases are in investigation or in other processes? So in other words, can you break down intake, investigation, uh, what other uh, areas there are, and give us a total number of cases that are in the pipeline and have yet to go to a review panel? Sure. But before you answer that, can I, I, this is just a personal point of privilege. Is there something happening outside that we need to be concerned about? Madam Chair, there is an organized protest that okay. was outside of Senator Klobuchar's office. It has moved down Washington Avenue. This is a protest calling for ceasefire in the Middle East. Okay. So you can probably hear it outside the, the rooms. Um, our security teams are well aware of it. Um, and and I, hopefully it doesn't disrupt the meeting too much, but that's, that's what's happening outside. Okay. Thank you very much. And I also want to note that we are now at 30 minutes and 37 seconds. Is there a desire to extend the 30 minute time that we al allowed for the interim OPCR director's report? I make a motion to extend for another 15 minutes. 
Is there a second? Okay, no second. Is there, yes. I will second the motion. Thank you. There's, it's been moved and second that we extend the interim OPCR director's report for 15 minutes. Um, is there any discussion? Wow, that's loud. One, two, three, four. Just wanted to make sure that we can, um, in that 15 minutes, make yes. sure we make our way through the rest of the team. Yes. Any other questions? No. Um, uh, Mr. Clark, can we have a roll call vote? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Lohr. Yes. Councilmember Shanfield. Yes. Councilmember Olson. No. Councilmember Clement. No. Councilmember Garan Sherman. Yes. I'm sorry, I said Councilmember. Oh. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> we got promotions. I, I, I degraded <laughs> all of you. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh. Uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Yes. Vice Chair Reeves. Yes. Chair Dido Swinton. Yes. There are seven ayes and two nays. Thank you. Uh, the motion carries, and we will. I'm starting the time now. 15 additional minutes, and if we could just be mindful that we have this whole rest of the this thing to get through in those 15 minutes. I'm sorry. You were g going to answer the question. Do I? Do you need me to repeat it, or you know what I've got to? Oh. oh. Is it on? Okay. As of April 10th, there were 205 open investigations, which includes intake, investigations, things that are pending uh, review, and then uh, things that are awaiting panel. So there are two, two, 205 is the most. Based on that number and uh, the seven uh, cases that will be investigated in OPCR, what is the time frame for getting those two, those uh, 205 cases, which I assume include the legacy cases. Yes. What's the time frame for getting them all to review panels? I wish I could answer that. I can't say that with uh, like a firm number, um, considering that intake, some cases can take five minutes, some cases can take a week, depending on the allegations, the amount of BWC review. There's a lot of factors that play in, in just in the intake investigations. The administrative investigations should take within 180 days, but as we all know, it takes considerable, considerably longer than that. Um, again, that also impacts how many uh, in, uh, officers are in, in an, an administrative case, how, much is, how many BWC hours, how long are the interviews, are those interviews being rescheduled, uh, can we even get a hold of the complainant, and a lot of that affects the timeline for those cases. And then the, for the review panel review, I believe it's 15 days for the supervisor to review those cases, um, considering that there are 16 cases, that is taking me longer than that, um, and I will, ad I will admit that, uh, and um, some of those cases, on average, I spend three to four hours per each one. Again, if there's multiple BWCs or the transcripts are extensive, I sit and watch and listen to all of that. So that also takes time in, in reviewing. Um, so without knowing what's in the 160 cases within intake, I can't give you a definitive answer. Um, because, like I said, some cases are very easily uh, determine uh, within a certain disposition, a case disposition, while others can take much longer. I would just hope that you'll be working, when you work with Alifa, that um, you will get some guidance on what has worked in other jurisdictions. I believe the public should have an expectation of how long it takes to clear those cases yeah. and how long it takes once new cases come in. So I think, I, I appreciate you're, you're coming into quite a quagmire, uh, but I do think that we have to keep going towards the public, uh, being able to have confidence that their cases are not going to become legacy cases. And those legacy cases, how far back do they go at this point? There is a 2021 case that is within administrative review. And so the rest are generally what, two years old, three years old? Yes. Okay. Uh, going on to um, 
the Wiley Reber. Uh, I do believe very strongly that we're in a better place than we were on March 5th when this contract had no scrutiny. Uh, I also am very concerned and want to know what firewall protections are being put in place uh, so that Greg Wiley, who is one of the lead negotiators for the city on the police contract and gets his marching orders from the mayor, how, how if that there will be a firewall between that and what is supposed to be in internal uh, these investigations that he's doing. So for instance, will Wiley Reber be permitted uh, to investigate a case that has uh, a member of the of MPD who serves on the police federation on their negotiating team. Have these kind of things been thought out? Because the issue of conflict of interest has not been settled. It's one of the things that I remain very concerned about in the independence of the Wiley Reber law firm. So with that and, and also standard operating procedures, is that, has that been worked out in terms of how they will be proceeding in the same way that OPCR and IA investigators proceed? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, that particular topic as to whether or not they will review someone who is in the Federation, we have not discussed that point, but we do have parameters set in place and we actually have a meeting tomorrow with Alifa and other stakeholders within uh, the city enterprise that, to further address those parameters. So, so some of the things that we have talked about is that they will not be handling um, use of force cases, for example, anything that, that's alleging discrimination, uh, that will be handled within OPCR. There are some parameters pl uh, in place for pursuits or any cases that it have uh, an extensive amount of BWC, an extensive amount of uh, officers involved. That we will, that there are some cases that will be sent to them, but we do have strict parameters and we are in the process of finalizing those within the next few days. That is that is wonderful news. I'm glad that you're working with Alif on that. They have a tremendous amount of expertise. Just a couple questions on the CJIS training. Point of, point of inquiry. Madam Chair, I would ask that if we could possibly go on to the rest of the room, and if we have time, then we can get to Commissioner Gurney and Sherman's questions. That, that's not how the rules were set up. I have a few questions on well, CJIS that I think I should be permitted to ask. Uh, yeah, what is it about CJIS that after excuse, 10 months? Excuse me. I would me. ask my, my, my ear crew to be asked I know, first. but you want excuse to change me. the rules in the middle of the game. I, I that is simply not Excuse the me. way we should be proceeding. Commissioners, our meeting norms indicate that we're going to speak one at a time and when recognized, and we also have a point of order. Um, and I believe that the request of the commissioner is sensible. It, we now have about nine and a half minutes of this 15 minutes that we voted to extend the report by. And so I am going to ask Commissioner Gurry and Sherman to hold her questions until we continue down for the rest of the commissioners to ask or make their comments. And if there is time, then we'll come back to you. So thank you. Commissioner Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you, Director Amini. Thank you, Madam Chair. I really appreciate your report. Um, on your review panel section, you talk about there's two cases that are ready for a review, and I'm just curious, when will we know or get a date for those to be scheduled? Uh, because previously, sometimes the time frame was kind of short, or we got uh, information at the last minute of when those dates were. So if you have an idea of when those two panels will be put up for dates to be scheduled, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, um, one case does not have extensive BWC review, so hopefully that will be um, scheduled fairly quickly. I will try my best to not schedule anything within two weeks of notifying the CCPO. And then the other one does have maybe five to six uh, BWC activations. I can't remember off the top of my head if that is more than an hour, um, but we will take that into consideration when we schedule it. So when this was written, I only had confirmation of two CCPO members having the CGS background, but now that we have six, we can definitely start the process in getting that scheduled. Um, in terms of the scheduling, now that uh, the commissioners have city emails, we are hoping to use a city calendar instead of uh, the poll, the doodle poll um, and to have those times set in a more organized uh, manner very similar to what we as you know city employees use and then kind of have that uh, moving forward thank you. thank you Commissioner Shanfield 
Thank you, dear uh, Chair Dito Swenson and, and Director Amini. Thank you so much. Um, just a follow-up on, on uh, Vice Chair Reeves' questions about the uh, upcoming panels. Um, I'm delighted to hear that the uh, we'll use the calendar. That would be great. Um, and then I'll just wanted to invite, um, I don't know who the right person is, but if it's you, um, to make sure that uh, there is equity of voice in the in the commission, as, assuming we're all trained and ready to go, um, and that you are welcome to invite people who haven't replied yes to come to panels um, to keep doing that so that we're all like pulling our weight and doing good work. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner Clement. I um, pulled, sorry, I've lost my voice. I pulled up the uh, reports that you had posted, um, these case numbers, and I'm curious to know, one of them said like a 13 hour, or 13.43, is that days or hours suspended is my first question. It doesn't say the dirt, it just says, four, yeah. it just as an example, it just says like 13.43 for one particular officer and then for a different one, that person's discipline isn't posted at all. And that's okay, it's not my job to monitor it. I'm just wondering, is there um, a reason why one officer's business or person, you know, their suspension would be posted, but then another officer's wouldn't be and how that is determined? So for the suspension, I would defer to uh, MPD, but I'm pretty sure it's hours and not days. Um, if they if they want to correct me on that. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. It could be due to the statute of 13.43 as to why one officer has a uh, information public while the other one doesn't mm -hmm. um, in terms of the the hour suspension I think it is due to hours and not days um, and I'm sorry there was a part three to your question I think that the, I think that the, the um, I have to go back and look at it and I won't waste time on it now but I think that where it said the suspension number it was 13.5 Four, three. It was just because remember I said it was a 13 out. So that was actually written in there if I'm remembering correctly, but I'll go back and read that statue and okay. try to Absolutely. figure it out for there by myself. Thank you. Yes. Uh, City Attorney Anderson will answer that. Um, uh, Madam Chair, um, it, I'm doing a little speculating, but what you may see in some documents is a redaction and a 13.43, uh, the number in there, that's a uh, Reference to Minnesota Statutes 13.43, which means that that information is being redacted because it's private personnel data. So whenever we do redactions, we have to actually say under what statutory authority the data is not public. So that is very likely what the 13.43 reference is. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Ms. Meany, thank you so much for your work uh, and your diligence and, and progress. Um, I, I think the one question that's left on my mind is last month we had a pretty detailed presentation about the total backlog picture with all of the legacy cases and the number 297 is what stuck in my mind. And I, it's hard for me to trace through all of the report here where we are with that 297 and what progress we're making. And I also have the strong sense that you're developing a pretty aggressive work plan with the resources you have uh, to attack that 297 and growing number of cases. But I think the more we can give the public a sense of the shape of that work plan, uh, the better we'll feel uh, from our side and, and, and maybe from the public. So I know there's many variables you're working on, but I just want to express an, a request that we keep working on that work plan. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Commissioner Olson. I'm trying to um, assimilate the, the, the staffing um, size. And it, it seems to me that you have five full-time investigators. Is that right? But one's vacant now? We have five full-time case investigators, one full-time intake investigators, and then we have a vacant intake investigator. So the total would be six full-time yes. investigators? Yes. Um, and is that enough going forward, or are there any plans to to try and uh, get uh, get approval to increase the size of that staff? Um, well, we're we're trying to hire that that seventh position. Mm -hmm. 
but in terms of fu for future allocation, is that what you're referring to? Yes, is, is seven enough to, to attack the backlog? In my opinion, no. Um, but the current investigators also need additional training. And once they have that training, and I'll, I'll speak for intake specifically, once they have that specialized training, for example, just being uh, faster at being able to pull that data, identify officers, and start memorizing the PMP. Uh, for for um, contacts, I used to be an intake investigator for three and a half years before. So I, I'm speaking from experience. When you when you start, you are you know it's daunting, and you know there are eight to ten. MPD programs that you have to familiarize yourself with, but in give, given enough time and experience and working with that data, you just become more efficient and faster. And that's kind of what I'm hoping will happen in intake. Um, and then after a while, you start memorizing policy, uh, which, which I did. So I, I would expect the same from the intake investigators. They just need time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We uh, have 30 seconds. So, Commissioner Garian Sharman, if you have a 25 second now comment. Yeah, I have a comment. I think that um, it seems that we're not being given enough time to do our oversight role by limiting ourselves like this. And uh, so, what I'm going to do is ask uh, Interim Director Amini, I'm going to email you the remaining of my questions. Do you think that you could answer those and send them out to the entire commission? And then, um, uh, I would like to direct this to the city clerk. Is that permissible? Would that be something outside the open meeting law? Madam Chair, that's actually a very good idea, that if there are any outstanding questions, the staff can certainly follow up those two in writing. And if Ms. Amini or other staff would send those through my office, we'll make sure to send them to all of you and make sure that there's a public record. So I don't see any problem with that. Wonderful. With that, I'll submit the, the remainder of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Interim Director Amini. And I'll direct the city clerk to receive and file that port report. So next we have a report on the community inputs. No, before that, I'd like uh, this backup. If all city staff present could just rise and introduce yourselves, um, I would appreciate it. Oh, in unison, okay. Thanks for the, the break there. Um, I'm Todd Barnett. I am the Commissioner of Community Safety for the City of Minneapolis. Thank you. Good evening. Margaret Anderson Kelleher, COO, uh, Interim Civil Rights Director. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Kristen Anderson, City Attorney. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Assistant City Attorney, Jameis Whitey. Thank you. Good evening, Andrew Delane, Assistant City Attorney. Thank you. Hello, Julie Teets, um, pro Project Manager on the City Attorney's Implementation Team. Thank you. Good evening, Commander Yolanda Wilkes over the Implementation Unit, Minneapolis. Thank you. Good evening, Kevin Carlisle, work for the City of Minneapolis and Implementation Unit, Manager of Community Engagement. Thank you. And then Carolina Amini, the Interim <laughs> Director of Office of Police Conduct Review. Thank you for coming back up. <coughs> okay. And now we're, Madam Chair. Yes. Could we uh, please have the uh, members of ALIFA introduce themselves? Sure, why not? Members of ALIFA, come on down. You deserve a stretch break as well. Arlinda Westbrook, Alifa, um, lead for oversight and accountability, community engagement, and non-discriminatory policing. Thank you. Good evening, Marianne Viveret. I'm the lead for Stop, Search, and Arrest, uh, assisting Arlinda with internal affairs, accountability, transparency, and assisting with uh, officer assistance programs um, with Julie Solomon. Thank you. 
now we're going to have the report on the community input sessions focused on the police department's policies and procedures. Um, commissioners, this is the presentation that was postponed from our March meeting and a copy of the presentation was included in the agenda packet. Here to present that report is Commander Yolanda Wilkes and I'll recognize Commander Wilkes for that presentation. Good evening. I apologize for the last uh, mishap. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, I'll be talking about some of the implementation unit updates um, as it relates to the community engagement. Hopefully you guys all can hear me. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, so as you guys know, last year we, uh, MPD, we entered into a contract that was signed um, by both parties on July 13th, 2023, uh, within the parameters of, that, of the settlement agreement. Uh, written by many are uh, by MDHR uh, we were to establish uh, implementation unit and we did so and so we in doing so last year um, just so I can back up we started off with absolutely no one within that unit so everyone from the unit um, they came from the community they wanted to be here but of course we had um, we went through some onboarding and where they had to become acclimated with the city um, and just the processes within Minneapolis itself. Also within that agreement, it stated that we had to host and have several engagement sessions around uh, three major topics. That was use of force, stop search and arrest, mission, vision, values, and goals, and uh, non-discriminatory and impartial policing. We held three session, sessions each, um, all located over, many, over uh, demographically over Minneapolis. City of Minneapolis, uh, giving not everyone an opportunity to participate um, in those event, or in those sessions. In addition to those nine community engagement sessions, we went uh, we went on to have five additional sessions so we, that we can target culturally specific community members. Uh, we did find that with when uh, in doing so that we still had a lot of folks who were afraid to, you know come to the table. Some folks, they just didn't trust the process, but we did have individuals who came out and wanted to be a part to see if this was going to be something new. Um, and we wanted to work with those individuals on how to get more people. And what we heard um, from a lot of community members were just keep showing up, don't stop. Uh, so outside of the nine initial sessions, we had five additional sessions, and I think they were more beneficial to us just learning the community members, learning the fears, learning how we can strategically come out here and continue to be present at the table. Um, in doing so, uh, we took that feedback back from the community members internally and externally, so community members sworn and non-sworn. We took uh, we probably analyzed over 4,500 pieces of com uh, community feedback. We went through those notes. Uh, we rotated individuals within a unit being that we had, it was a civilian unit. Um, and if I can just back up just a second, we have a capacity of 25 that we can hire within this unit, and we're at 21. But around the time of the community engagement sessions, we've, we had maybe 10. And they were, bare, they were fairly new, doing the best that they knew how. Um, so we took those community members, we took that team, we sat down, we started to, to analyze the feedback, and we rotated it so that we can take out the biases to you know, make sure the process, the process was fair. Um, and we'll have a group of folks look at it, and then we'll switch it to another group of folks so that we can make sure we're targeting them. And if, if, if there are any actionable items we can find, that we were taking those and, and, and document it to the best of our abilities. Um, what we found is that a lot of folks or a lot of community members, they were telling personal stories through experiences, you know, and we had to be able to look at those stories and figure out what the community, you know, what were they trying to express, you know, was it use of force issues, was it things that family members were telling them, and we also had to navigate through general stories and just you know, my car is parked outside. We had to navigate through those stories as well, but we looked at every piece of feedback we got. We did not disregard anything that we um, took in. Those, those engagement sessions were facilitated by D. Young Facilitation um, Company. 
um, but they were led by MPD as per the agreement. Um, and this was, I mean, it was, I, mean I don't want to get off topic, but I think that was a, a good way of doing it, just having MPD present, like how do we bring us back together again? So um, we utilize both qualitative and quantitative measures where possible to guide our findings. Um, and if, if possible, we made sure that we read, we analyzed, and we continue to rotate through members of our team. What we found is that both internally and externally, so sworn officers or civil, or civilians within the department, as well as community members, wanted or saw the same thing within the findings. We saw that the top, top five things that constantly came up in this order was policy. Uh, they were concerned that the policies are outdated, that they were old, and that we needed to update them according to the, to the times and where we're living here. Um, training, training, they wanted officers to be better equipped have better tr uh, tools. It felt that there were better things out there um, and we should be using the best practices out there, uh, especially when engaging with community members. Uh, accountability, that we should focus on changing and improving the culture and our organization as a whole. And engagement and community education. Through those stories, we found that we, there was a lack of understanding where we was, you know, obviously we perceive things to be differently, different, contingent upon where we're at and the role we play. And so we found that by coming together and just having some small talks or just conversation in general, educating on where we're at and listening to the community on where they're at, could mitigate a lot of things and a lot of issues that we saw. And this is based on reading the report. Those reports uh, can be found on the City of Minneapolis website under the Minneapolis Implementation Updates page. Um, we did post them. We did try our best to communicate with the community members. We received a ton of emails uh, while we were uh, analyzing the data. It did take us quite a while because of the amount of people that we had uh, within the implementation and because we wanted to do a thorough job and we just didn't want to rush the process. And so just so you guys are aware of where we're currently at, so we have that feedback and we're just now starting to look at policy so that we can incorporate the feedback received into policy. That as well will take time just because, again, we pulled out the major themes, but we also have to go back and see if it's something that's already in policy, if it's something that we can change, if it's something that we can incorporate, and where does it fit, if it fits, and be able to come back and respond to community members if it doesn't and why. Within that policy update itself, um, just to remind everyone about the process, it will be a process, and I know um, people want it a little faster than what we're going to get, but we, we're taking that feedback, we're collecting the feedback, and once we do so, we create this policy or we revise a policy, and we incorporate that information, and we send it off. The next step is to send it off to MDHR for review and uh, ELIFA, the Independent Monitor for review. One has, MDHR has 14 days, um, and I believe Alifa has 30 days. And so their experts and their expertise, they come in, and, and if they feel that it's acceptable, then we can move on to the next phase. And the next phase will be training, developing a curriculum around that policy that we've just now established. But we don't just develop that training and put it out, we also have to get that approved as well. And, that, and once we develop that curriculum, making sure um, we're looking at every aspect we can, we send it off to MDHR and uh, ELIFA for more feedback. Now, if, at any time, if, if, it's, if, it, if it doesn't meet the needs of the community or meet the needs of the members, um, we go back to the table and see you know, what, what we can do, how we can fix it. You know, maybe we're missing something. And that's a process in itself. Um, it's important to understand that once we have a training, once we have a policy and we have a training, that that training does not become effective until all MPD has been trained. And so I don't want to put a timeline. I don't have a timeline. So, uh, but all MPD has to be trained on it before it becomes effective. And then where we're currently at as a stand is uh, we have an independent monitor, Alifa, and they are here and they're establishing their benchmarks. And so right now we are in the process of still creating policies, but we're also working with and waiting for that benchmark to be established. So as far as community engagement, that's, where, um, that's what I have for an update. And I do apologize for not making a meeting less time. Thank you, Commander Wilkes. I'm going to start from the right side of this, this is a dais. Okay, thank you. 
I don't know why, I wanted to call it a stage. Um, Podium. <laughs> Commissioner Olson. Thank you, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Uh, thank you so much, Commander. Uh, one quick question from the perspective of this commission and the community engagement role that we want to play. Um, uh, let me just plant the question for you to think about. How does your outreach and community engagement process for MPD and through this implementation process connect best with the work that we want to do on behalf of the public and the community? And uh, the ways in which we can align our work uh, or complement our work. So I, I, it's the kind of question that's very open-ended and yes. it's just more of an invitation, but uh, your thoughts would be welcome whenever. Thank you for that. And I think it's worthwhile to have a conversation so that we can see, so that I'm not just burning out anything. Thank if you. that's okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Clement. I don't have any questions, thank okay. you. Thank you. Commissioner Shanfield. Uh, Commander Wells, thank you so much um, for your presentation. Uh, our police policy recommendations uh, and, and research group, uh, work group, a, a, a subgroup of this commission, um, has been looking at your reports as well. And, and we're really delighted by all of the data that you've provided, all of the effort that your team has gone through. Um, and much like um, uh, uh, Commissioner Smith, I would love to uh, have another conversation um, about how we could help with the policy review and sort of where this this body, or at least the work group um, in service of the body, could potentially support that work. Um, yes. And the cycle is really helpful. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Would you be willing to have another conversation? Yes, I okay. will. Yep. Thank to you. Answer your question. Thank you, Vice Chair Reeves. Just want to say thank you for the report. Nothing else to add. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gurry and Sherman. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Wilkes. I just also want to thank all the staff that introduced themselves and uh, Alifa. I think it's great that you're here. Uh, I think the public needs to see how involved the city is, so thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Wilkes, I just want to ask, is the PowerPoint uh, the final report for these uh, nine uh, listening sessions and the five extra ones? Or will there be a comprehensive narrative final report? The PowerPoint here or the one online, I'm sorry? The PowerPoint that you presented here. No, so the reports, the final reports from our unit is listed online at the City of Minneapolis website okay. under implementation updates. And that's three of them, and I believe I sent it to you guys uh, quite some time. Those Great. are our final reports. I wonder if we could pull up on this uh, presentation that you dis just did, the policy update process. It was like looked like a big kind of circle. Yes, thank you. What is of great concern to me is there is nothing about the CCPO in this uh, policy update process. And yet uh, our, um, uh, our, our, our charge under the ordinance from the city is that uh, we will be responsible for providing analysis on all changes of po policy. Um, let me read it directly. The commission shall review and provide the public with its analysis and recommendation within 120 days of proposed changes to all policies, procedures, and special orders of the police department which govern use of force or other subject matters addressed in federal or state uh, can, uh, orders. So you've got this whole process, you've got Alifa in there, you've got the development implementation training, and there is nothing about our role. And I'm very concerned that we are not be being taken seriously as a commission. I don't mean this is a criticism of you or the police department. I just think in general, we are focused so much on our role as doing the police misconduct cases that we are missing the fact that the city council charged us with a lot of powers which are enumerated in the ordinance and then specific mandates, one of which is this 120 day review. So I've been asking for months, where do we fit in to this policy analysis? Do we get the policies before they go to MDHR? Or do we get them after they go to MDHR? If we get them after they go to MDHR and MDHR agrees with them, then we don't have a role. We obviously need to see those policies at some point. I don't see any progress in including us in all of these policy changes. Could you just comment on that and also what you might be working with in terms of uh, including us in policy with ALIFA? 
So honestly, uh, this was created when last year, July. Um, and so I'm still wrapping my head around the processes, to be completely honest with you. Um, I think that if it may be worthwhile just to have another conversation so that we can get aligned. And I think that would make better sense than me trying to go back and throw something together to answer would, your question. Would it be helpful for us to send you the policy, uh, the language in the ordinance that relates to policy? So it'll be helpful. You can send it. But I still think for me, the way I process things, I need to have a conversation and talk it through. And so that I understand the process. And if that's indeed, if that's a change that needs to be changed, I'm willing to do that. But I want to be aligned when I do so and make sure I'm doing it correctly. I appreciate that. I think a lot of the things that are under the powers and mandates are new for this commission. We haven't really touched them in the last year. Um, we're trying to get that and develop our work plan. Uh, but as we develop a work plan for this policy, we need to know where we fit in. Yes. So I would hope that with Alifa, we'll be able to sit down and have that conversation with you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Commissioner Lohr. Nothing for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sturm. Uh, nothing specific. Just thanks for coming in and giving us the report and for all the work you're doing. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I do have a question. Um, and you have been up here for 14 minutes and 35 seconds in case you were wondering <laughs> where we are on time. Uh, my question is, and especially since you mentioned that the community sort of expressed that they wanted you to keep showing up, yes. what plans do you have for community engagement going forward? Are, are there any more sessions like this uh, in the pipeline? So is, is it okay if I have manager of community Absolutely. engagement? He, he does all the planning for us. Yep. Thank you. If you'll repeat your name, sir. Yes, it's for you. <laughs> Thank you. Once again, my name is Kevin Carlisle. I'm the manager of the community engagement for their implementation in the Minneapolis Police Department. Uh, for the follow-up engagement sessions, per the settlement agreement, we're, we're charged with having every quarter one meeting, so four times a year. Okay. The plan for our department is to go over and beyond that. So what we're looking at is between eight to ten meetings. We already have had two. So I've already scheduled eight total already with neighborhood community organizations to present our information to. What I'm looking at is to present it to uh, in the com neighborhood communities at each precinct. So uh, first precinct has two, second precinct has two, third precinct fourth precinct, fifth precinct, all these precincts will have at least two meetings about the information that came through the analysis of the data report. And that's our way of getting that information out back to the community. One of the things that Commander Wilkes and Chief O'Hara discussed is that we're not just collecting data and information, we're also going to bring back data back to the community. The more transparent you are, the more trust you can start to rebuild and get back from the community. Okay. Thank you. And so, Commander Wilkes, you also said, um, and I just lost my thought. It's a struggle being old. Um, okay, well, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but thank you. So I have no idea what it was about. Um, thank you for your presentation and for being here. And we look forward to continuing this conversation with you about how CCPO can uh, will or will be involved in this policy um, review with you. So thank you again. Thank you. Oh, uh, Vice Chair Reeves. Just one question. Excuse me. Just one question. Thank you for that. Um, for the community engagement sessions that you've identified two per precinct, how do you plan on, on getting that information out? Because a lot of the meetings, some people don't go to the city website. There's just different ways that we can get it out. Some of the, the meetings that I've seen in the community, the same people come over and over again. And some people are just left out because they didn't know, even though the city does its best to put it on the website. So curious to know how else you're going to put this community engagement sessions out there to promote them. Thank you. Do you want it? Oh, it's OK. OK, sorry. <laughs> well, what we. What I'm sorry, it's so low. Mm. <gasps> I apologize. Um, thank you, Commander Wilkes. Um, uh, 
What we have done is basically try to reach out to the community. So there's different ways, as you said, uh, of social media, getting it out on the MPD, other radio stations uh, within city of Minneapolis. Also going out to the communities, hand delivering, going to the small businesses, community centers, organizations. Uh, I will say I try to have the mentality to have a grass, grassroots going out to the community, getting the information out. Not everyone is technology technology savvy when it comes to technology so uh, it, it may be helpful to go to the neighborhood associations to help spread the word for your meetings because uh, they have a really good email database for everyone in the community that participates thank you yep, thank you yeah I think that was it for me too okay <laughs> thank, thank you so much I did remember what I was going to ask you it was it. just it was just related to um, the the whole comment about the community wanting you to uh, stay out there visible. You also mentioned that um, when you are going through this policy recommendation and when things are approved, or, or when you're looking at um, comments and you said some of them you might not be able to do anything about and we would, we would just share why we couldn't change something. So are these community sessions, well, not, it won't be for a while, but how will you let the community know, you know, there were, maybe there were a lot of comments to change policy A, but yes. you are not, that's not possible. So how will the community know we looked at it, but we can't do anything about it? I think we're going to be as transparent as we can by bringing and showing some of those examples, because I think the only way for you to understand is to see some of them. Like, you know, um, if you were talking about something that occurred 20 years ago, but you had there was no substance, we'll just put it up there. So you'll have to read it with us. And so we'll bring those things to the community sessions or whatnot. Okay. Um, so not isolating to a particular person, but just showing examples. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your report, and Mr. Carlisle, thank you for your contribution as well. Is it and possible to ask another question? <coughs> Is it possible to ask one more question? Go for it. Thank you. I just wanted to make an, uh, an offer. A question um, is, would you be willing to accept our help in getting the word out? Um, we're all representing different neighborhoods. So if, there, if you would provide the information to us, we'd be happy. I will speak for myself. I will be happy to give it to my ward, and I'm sure others would too. Yep, we'll be happy to okay. do so. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you again for your report. And I'll direct the clerk to receive and file it. And next, we're going to have reports from our work groups as listed on the agenda. And we're going to allocate um, 10 minutes for each of those reports. So first, we'll hear from the poli Police Policy Research and Recommendations Work Group, which will be given by Commissioner Shanfield. Thank you, Chair Dito Swinton um, and, and members of the Commission uh, and the public. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I, I want to thank also uh, the other members of the work group um, because uh, even in the face of uh, a bit of um, a lack of clarity in terms of our charge and what's possible and what's not possible, um, people have continued uh, to engage and to show up and help uh, each other learn. We're learning together. So. Um, in our last meeting, um, uh, thank you to Commissioner uh, Williams Johnson, Commissioner Serm, Commissioner Green Sherman, uh, thank you for coming. And, and also a special thank you to uh, uh, Chris Band from OPCR. Um, he's been an invaluable uh, contributor to the Police Policy Research and Recommendations Working Group. He comes after hours uh, and is uh, a wonderful uh, addition. We met on March 21st. Uh, like I said, four of us were there. Our next uh, meeting will be uh, next Thursday. Uh, we've been meeting once a month. Um, and at our last meeting, we continued to increase the familiarity with policies of other cities. We looked at Seattle this time. Um, we also wanted to increase our understanding of the reports that uh, Commander Wilkes just mentioned. So we've been going to uh, the updates page, we've been reviewing the reports, sort of dividing them up uh, and reporting back um, so that we don't all have to read each of them, um, but that we really want to get in um, deep in the data that's already been collected. Uh, this time we looked at two particular reports, the officer wellness report and the youth voice report. In particular, two things that we noticed. Um, 
in the officer wellness report, we really noticed uh, a need for more support and more training. People were saying loud and clear that that is what they would like. Uh, by people, I mean officers. Um, and that support before training is preferred. In other words, um, uh, both mental health as well as um, uh, shared understanding before they're expected to attend a training. Uh, our recommendation is we'd really like to hear about um, the implementation unit's training and support plans, and I see that's part of the policy uh, cycle that Commander Wilkes has talked about. So I would welcome a further conversation about that. In looking at the youth voice report, uh, we noticed that young people uh, are reporting not having enough spaces where they feel safe. Um, they would like to get to know officers, um, their voice is loud and clear uh, through the report that there's not a space or time where they can really communicate proactively with the police and that that's something that's really important um, to consider the voice uh, of young people as well and so we'll continue to advocate for that. Uh, and we'd like to also think about as a, as a commission how we might be able to amplify youth voices uh, perhaps um, uh, in the community engagement session um, when we're inviting folks and as well as the sessions uh, just mentioned, uh, we'd like to really make a targeted effort to include young people. Um, they're the future and their voices really matter. We're going to continue to review reports. Uh, the next one we'd like to look at is the community engagement report in particular. Um, that's the one up on the website. Uh, from the implementation unit. And uh, we'd really like some guidance on how to make recommendations on policies based on our review of these reports as well as our panel experiences. So I, uh, as Commissioner Green Sherman mentioned, um, the 120 days in the ordinance has been a, 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 a source of confusion for us of whether, where, when that 120 days starts. What I've been told recently um, by folks in the city council is that the or because the ordinance was written before uh, the uh, settlement agreement, that perhaps there is a conflict there. And uh, I would love some guidance uh, and to know who to go to next to understand that and unpack that and figure out what, uh, what in what order um, and in what voice uh, as a commission we have. We also reviewed the data dashboards for arrests, stops, uh, in, in interactions, and use of force. And we noticed that there's, in particular, a lot of unknowns in the other uh, unknowns and, uh, or other in the stop data. And we'd like to uh, unpack that a little bit more and learn more about the pre-stop race category. That was an interest to us. And perhaps members of ALIFA uh, would, would uh, welcome conversation about that. But that the data dashboard seems like it could um, uh, be offer, offering more, more clear information. In particular, what is expected of officers as far as reporting. Um, we're wondering if the data is incomplete or if the policy for reporting might be insufficient. We'd also like to collaborate with OPCR to break the data down further and compare the perceived race and the reported self-reported race data. Um, using our uh, research and study process that was passed by this body uh, back in November. As far as next steps, our plan is to, as I mentioned, continue reviewing the reports uh, from the implementation unit. And we'd like to know when and how MDHR, the DOJ, and Alifa will be reviewing the MPD policies. Um, this has been a thread throughout the, the meeting today. Um, we are unclear on the next steps, and we are unclear who to reach out to. We would really love some guidance there. Um, and who is expected to decide when the CCPO will be uh, using our voice in offering feedback on MPD policies? Is the city council involved? Is that, is that up to them? Is that up to uh, a d another body? That answer is unknown, and we would really like those questions answered. There's a list of uh, a few outstanding questions we have as well. Some have been answered today. Um, so I think I will pause there. Yeah, I'll pause there. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shanfield. I'm going to start from the left and ask if there are any questions about the Police Policy Research and Recommendations Work Group Report. Commissioner Sturm. Commissioner Lohr. 
Commissioner Gary and Sherman. I'd just like to thank uh, Chair uh, Scheinfeld for an excellent report. Really appreciate it. I do want to comment um, that it, it, it's it's concerning to me that um, th this is part of the learning curve, part of the wrinkles and what we learn going forward with consent decrees. Um, if the city managers or staff are taking a position that a particular part of an ordinance is no longer applicable, um, I'm not sure that they have the authority to do that. I'd like to know who the umpire is in that case. So if the MDHR consent decree conflicts with an ordinance which has not been revoked uh, and clearly is in force, then which takes precedent and who makes that decision? I think that's really important and it dovetails into the governance committee, which um, has been looking at uh, proposed changes to the ordinance. And so uh, we've already got the, the president of the city council wanting to see changes in the ordinance. And we really are going to have to muscle that out and make sure that with the information that we have right now, we're making changes to the ordinance so that we don't have these conflicts and having one particular entity saying, well, maybe there's a conflict and maybe there's not and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. Uh, we have an ordinance, it, it, it's, it guides us. We don't get to pick and choose which par parts of it uh, are implemented. And so if the city managers or city staff want to change, uh, then they should be putting in their own uh, recommendations for, for uh, ordinance changes. Uh, but right now, we are part of the policy making process and we are being neglected. And I don't think that's going to go over very well with the public. Thank you. Vice Chair Reeves? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Clement? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Olson? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Shanfield, thank you for your report, and thank you to all of your work group members. And hearing no further questions, I'll ask the clerk to receive and file that report. Next up is the report from our community engagement work group, which will be given by Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Chair Dito Swinton. Commissioners, uh, we do not have an April 4th uh, report from our community engagement group. We did not, uh, we're not able to hold a meeting last Thursday, but I have two items to report to you on nonetheless. From our March report, uh, the community engagement work group recommended that the commission hold its required annual public hearing at, uh, we said either our April or May meeting of the commission. And at last commission's, last month's meeting, we uh, resolved that the May 13th meeting would be the appropriate uh, time uh, for that meeting. Since that time, the uh, steering group, the chair, the vice chair, and the chair of each of the work groups have had a discussion and the chair is also engaged with the city staff. And there is a concern that our May 13th agenda is uh, quite loaded with uh, business given the reports coming from our governance uh, work group and the other work we need to do. So uh, the suggestion was to not hold our public hearing on May 13th. We then thought, uh, and then there was some discussion about how far out to postpone it. I think from our perspective, we think it's very important that we meet uh, this deadline and hold a, a public hearing, uh, and we'd like it to be in the month of May. We are told that uh, the facility is available on Tuesday, May 21st in the evening, and that that's a date uh, that is available. Uh, again, the format uh, that the community engagement work group recommends is that there be a brief presentation about the commission's charge, the work that we have done uh, to date, and our work plan for the rest of the year, that being a brief part of the evening, and the main agenda item of the evening being to listen. And so we would work uh, with city staff and our other partners to get the word out uh, and invite uh, people to come share their concerns, their perspective on our work. Uh, so, um, I guess that is one item that we'd like to put forward uh, is that we hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 21st at our regular time of six o'clock. Um, I believe at this, in this room. 
uh, and that we all do work in the meantime to get the word out and, and uh, prepare for that evening. So do I hear a motion? That is a motion, Madam Chair. Okay, can you re restate what your motion is? Uh, Just I would move, Madam Chair, that the commission hold its annual public hearing on Tuesday, May 21st at 6 p.m. in this room. Thank with you. With the agenda as I had described. Thank, thank you. Is there a second? A second, Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you. It's been moved and second that the CCPO hold its community engagement se session on May 21st at 6 p.m. in this um, location. Is there any discussion? Uh, Commissioner Gurian, Chairman. I'm very concerned about uh, the way that the date got changed. It seems to me that we had, if we didn't have a formal motion, we had an agreement that we would have this meeting, this public meeting, piggybacked onto our, our May 13th meeting. And then this steering group, which I didn't know existed, of five commissioners, the chair, the vice chair, and the three commission uh, work group chairs, got together and basically overrode that. I'm very concerned that this is the, at least the second time that we know of where one or a small group of people in between meetings decided that what the city wanted was more important than bringing it to us as a commission. We haven't discussed why there's so much on the agenda. Why can't we have an extra meeting? I also am very concerned. I've uh, been talking to people about uh, the public meeting and have that, and there are people who feel very strongly that it shouldn't be in this room that there isn't adequate parking, uh, that it's uh, not a conducive environment with us sitting up here on a, on a dais uh, to have that kind of dialogue. Uh, the benches aren't really good. People have been suggesting that we should have it in a, at a recreation center where there's parking, where there's ample public transportation. And now we're voting on having it on May 21st. We haven't had a meeting on it. Uh, I'm very discouraged by this. We have one public meeting that we are supposed to do within a year. And uh, we started on May 16th. May 13th, we would have just been under the year. May 21st, we're over the year. It's the simplest thing we can do logistically, and we haven't managed to do that. Again, I think we need to look at public perception here. We don't have an opportunity for the public to be weighing in. And what we do is we're still having backdoor dealing about what's to be done and the city wants this and the city is urging this. We are the commission, and I think we need to go back to we are the voice of, of the public on this, and I don't think we're being heard. I'm very discouraged uh, to get this news uh, and to basically, I'm, I'm wondering why we even have a community outreach uh, committee if we're just going to be overruled, and why, why we have a commission if a few people can overrule what, what has already been put in place and has been accepted. So to interrupt, Thank because you've repeated yourself several times, right. you Thank also sent it in an email, excuse but me, Commissioner, may I also Commissioner ask Clement. a question? Commissioner Clement, we, had a, we have a queue for questions if you... He, he, uh, is the meeting set for the 21st? Isn't Are we not talking about if we're going to change it or not? That is what we're discussing, um, <laughs> yes. Okay, I just want to, I was making sure that I'm like, am I adding it to the calendar or what? Because that whole rant was just... Okay, thank, thank you. We haven't set the meeting yet, have oh. we? We're discussing it now. Yes, we are. Correct. Thank okay. you. Okay. Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. That was going to be my, my comment that we are discussing um, this now. Um, the steering committee is by no means meant as a way to advert any decision from this body. We like to get things discussed, and we bring it to this body for discussion, just like any work group. Um, the date has not been set yet. Yes, it was talked about in the Community Engagement Committee to do it on the 13th. But we also want to make sure that the public has enough time to discuss. And if we start a meeting on the 13th at 6 p.m., and we run till after 8 o'clock, that's not going to have enough time for the community to have their time. So, yes, we recognize the community has a lot to say. And we want to make sure that we hear from them, give them ample time to be able to discuss any concerns that they may have. And so to me, um, and it is appropriate to have it on a different day. While recognizing that, yes, we did discuss it at the last meeting, um, but we do want to make sure the community has enough time to ask their questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments or questions? Commissioner Shanfield. 
I'm of two minds here. Um, in, in, in one, on one side, I really, really want to push forward and have something um, in May and to say, you know, we have done what we were asked to do. The other uh, voice in my head says, um, what is the purpose? Are we really clear on what is the purpose of getting people together? Because we have all of this data that, that as a work group uh, for the, the policy and research, we've been reading community voice and we have a lot of information. And so if the public is weighing in on our charge of the CCPO, we are not super clear on that yet. And so I wonder if we're gonna cause more confusion. I, I'm of two minds and I would love to entertain discussion and, and hear more from the community engagement work group who's thought through this and, and, and I'd love to understand more about what you see the vision for the conversation being. Thank you, Commissioner Smith with, or, or Commissioner Clement. Are you, is this your work group as well? No, I'm okay. on government. Okay. Did you did you have did you want to finish your comment? No, Before and I, I am sorry for interrupting, but it was it, it, I, I the accusations of not discussing it or you all gathering without us. I felt like the whole update was to uh, discuss it on if we felt like that was a good option. So okay. I was just really confused why we were having to listen to that. But thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Madam Chair, um, uh, two quick thoughts. Uh, I share in the dilemma and in the calendar pain and in uh, the logistical concerns. Uh, number one, though, I think our foremost responsibility is public accountability. And uh, just very simply, we have a limited amount of public comment time at the end of each meeting. I think we owe the public a single meeting where we listen uh, to their comments about the state of our work. I, for one, wish that we were further along in that work, uh, and I wouldn't mind another six months to kind of keep progressing before we uh, showed up in public and, and stood and listened. But I think we owe it. We've been in office for a year. It, it's time to sit and listen. Uh, there's not going to be a perfect night on the calendar, but the agenda is simple. The agenda is to simply report what we've, uh, what our charge is, what we've done to date, our work plan, and then to sit and listen. And and uh, I I expect that we'll have much more robust and elaborate engagement sessions uh, later in the year, and in coming years. But I think we have to get started. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clark. Uh, Madam Chair and to all commissioners, I just wanted to offer uh, a little context or perspective. To the extent that staff have had any input, I can say that I was consulted at some point along the way about the date, and I did share back, and I apologize, I can't remember with whom, that uh, it, the 13th being the regular meeting of this body might leave little time given the rest of the agenda for the public. And to uh, Commissioner Smith's point, it was my suggestion that a separate date dedicated only and exclusively to uh, public feedback was probably preferable for the community so that it wasn't limited to after a long meeting agenda. Secondly, I did say that on uh, the 20th, which had been suggested to me, we do not have either this space or room 100 in the new public service building available for this body. Those are the two rooms we have that have broadcast capability. And we've made a commitment as a city that these meetings are broadcast so that we can extend our reach into the community beyond physical presence in a room. Um, if the commission wants us to explore other options, I'm happy to, to try and do that in a short order. I hear a, a strong desire by the body to have this uh, public hearing or community engagement session in May, and I'm not sure that we'll be finding another alternative location, but the two rooms that we do have available that would be in May are not available on May 20th. They are available on May 21st. I've put a hold on this room. This chamber is much, I, I appreciate the comments about the setup is not conducive to an interactive dialogue. It's not. <coughs> but this room is subject to the clerk's control, and so I can make sure we have uh, control over this, this space. Um, the room 100 in the new public service building is a shared city resource. Uh, Ms. Hansen has looked just now as the dialogue has gone on. It seems to be available right now. Um, it's, it's a little bit, you're more familiar with that room. It is a little less imposing. It uh, doesn't have a dais. You know, tables can be set up, chairs. And we could certainly look at using that space on that same night, May 21st, if that, in terms of a format, is more um, 
acceptable to the body. But in terms of accommodating the schedule, the timing request, and the dates that are available, that was my input. I just want to be upfront about that. I wasn't trying to control this body's um, you know, uh, approval of its own pieces. But on May 20th, we do not have a space that we could broadcast from. We do on May 21st. To the extent that you're providing a space for the public to come in and talk, um, waiting to the end of a meeting, didn't feel like that was the desire of the community engagement or work group. And so that was my recommendation that you have a whole separate session dedicated only and exclusively to that function. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments about the motion that we have on the floor to conduct our community engagement session on May 21st at six o'clock? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner Gurian, Chairman. I don't know what the procedure is to do this, but I'd like to offer a friendly amendment that we change the location from this location to the alternative location uh, that City Clerk Casey Carl just mentioned. I do think it would be more conducive to that. Uh, and so uh, with, um, I'm making a friendly amendment a motion. I'm not sure if I'm doing it the right way. but you, you would just say I move to amend the motion and state how you want to move it. I move to amend uh, the motion to, uh, to have the community meeting on May 21st at the alternative location. Which would be where we used to meet, just whatever that building is called for the minutes. That pub, 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 oh my God! Public, public service, service building. 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 Thank you. The other public. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to amend the original motion to um, state that the meeting will be held on the twenty-first at six o'clock in the public service building, room one hundred, instead of in this location. Is there a second? Second by Jerry. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I have one question. Uh, Mr. Carl, is it possible that we could in the future have public meetings in spaces that don't necessarily have broadcast capability but are available for live streaming and would serve the same purpose and would allow us to actually go out into the community more fully than in a uh, formal setting? Madam Chair, I'm not prepared to respond to that question okay, at this you. time, but I'm happy to look into what options may be available and report back at a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, did I see another hand with a question about this? Um, no? I, I was seconding the motion. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further discussion about the amendment to change the location of the May 21st meeting, are we ready to vote? Yes. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Lohr? Yes. Commissioner Shanfield? Yes. Commissioner Olson? Yes. Commissioner Clement? Yes. Commissioner Gurian Sherman? Yes. Commissioner Stern? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Your mic is okay. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Vice Chair Reeves? Yes. Chair Dido Swinton? Yes. There are nine ayes on the amendment. All righty. Thank you. The ayes have it. So now the motion before us is to conduct the public engagement meeting on May 21st, 6 o'clock, in the Public Service Building, Room 100. Is there any further discussion about that motion? Commissioner Shanfield. Yes, I would just like to invite us to think about other folks we might deliberately invite. For example, Kevin Carlisle seems like a great person to make sure he's in the room. Okay. Um, thinking about who else we'd like to bring. Thank you. Any other discussion? I don't see any hands. All righty. Uh, we are ready to vote. Commissioner Lohr? Yes. Commissioner Shanfield? Yes. Commissioner Olson? Yes. Commissioner Clement? Yes. Commissioner Gurian Sherman? Yes. Commissioner Sturm? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Vice Chair Reeves? Yes. Chair Dido Swinton? Yes. There are nine ayes. Okay, thank you. The ayes have it. So we will conduct our community engagement meeting on May 21st, 6 o'clock in the Public Service Building, room 100. Commissioner Smith, there was one more. Madam Chair. You're on, yeah. Madam Chair, the um, other item that's uh, at this point on the agenda is not necessarily a community engagement work group item, but is a resolution setting the commission's priorities for the rest of the year. You all, as commissioners, uh, will recall that that resolution was in our meeting materials for our March meeting and was introduced. Um, 
and I will briefly summarize it. The idea is, as a commission, we have been given a number of different responsibilities. We have had some obstacles uh, to overcome and work through this year, uh, and it seems important that we name central priorities, what we want as a commission to focus on and for the public to know that we're focusing on those items. Uh, and so uh, it breaks down into three main areas of work. The first is complaint investigations and disciplinary review. I won't read uh, each item, but we have been taking in uh, these reports, acknowledging that there's a backlog, and, and working to see as a commission that there's a plan to address that backlog. We recognize also that we have responsibilities to complete our training uh, and the training be provided. Uh, we have responsibilities to serve on disciplinary panels uh, equitably and, and fairly. And then we should be reflecting on that service and see what we're learning from it. Secondly, the police policy and research uh, group has a work plan that it has offered and uh, this reflects their priorities of developing a working understanding of policies concerning use of force, stop and search, and discriminatory policing from comparable cities, um, and develop policy recommendations based on that work. We can hear as tonight that that work continues to deepen and, and broaden. Um, also, uh, there is a policy review and comment provision in the ordinance that has been discussed <coughs> this evening multiple times and the desire to seek clarity and align our process so that we have meaningful input uh, with the work of the Department of Human Rights and whatever uh, Department of Justice and independent monitor work uh, aligns as well. Finally, the third category of priority is community engagement, the public hearing we just set being one of them, and then a commitment to hold other listening sessions uh, later in the year, perhaps as many as four in different sectors of the city. Um, we can see an opportunity to collaborate uh, with uh, the MPD community engagement, with the uh, 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 monitor and others in that process. Um, and then finally, to in that process, to seek uh, alignment of our work with um, the city compliance team, OPCR, civil rights, uh, to best align our work with the Department of Human Rights uh, and the others. So uh, that is really a framework of a work plan. Uh, the th thought I would offer is if the commission is generally comfortable with this as a framework tonight, that we would support it and then expect to see uh, some more work happen between now and our May meeting for a more detailed work plan that reflects these priorities uh, and is something we're even prouder to share with the public on May 21st. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions um, about the community engagement report or this final um, resolution and the thought to build a work plan around it? Commissioner Gurry and Sherman. I just have a short comment. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Smith, for a great report on that. Uh, my concern goes back to what I heard tonight about uh, there might be conflicts with the ordinance. So the work plan is based on the present powers that we have. If that's going to change, then our, our work plan is going to be outdated. So I'm a little concerned uh, about presenting a, a work plan to the public uh, when we have not made progress on uh, the revisions to the CCPO ordinance, uh, I think we're just going to be looking like we don't have our acts together and that we're not coordinating enough. Uh, but with that said, we do need a plan, and I hope that our powers will be maintained and that they will be found to be consistent uh, with the MDHR consent decree and we can go forward with this plan. I think a lot of people worked on it very hard, and I think it was explained very well by Commissioner Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any addition? I don't see any hands. Okay. Madam Chair, yes. I would move adoption of the resolution. Oh, thank you. There's a motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Second. There's second. Thank you. There's. It's been moved and second that we adopt the resolution um, setting 2024 commission priorities. Is there any discussion? No discussion. Are we ready to vote? Yes, we are. 
I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Lohr. Yes. Commissioner Shanfeld. Yes. Commissioner Olson. Yes. Commissioner Clement. Yes. Commissioner Gurian Sherman. Yes. Commissioner Sturm. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Vice Chair Reeves. Yes. Chair Dido Swinton. Yes. There are nine ayes. Thank you, and the motion carries. <coughs> and we have adopted the Community Commission on Police Oversight Resolution setting 2024 commission priorities. Thank you to the Community Engagement Work Group and to all the commissioners who serve on it for all of your work. And I will ask the clerk to receive and file your report. And finally, we will have a report of our governance work group, which will be given by Commissioner Olson. So the governance work group has uh, two projects that it's undertaking. Uh, one is the establishment of bylaws for the commission. The other is consideration of revisions to the ordinance that um, governs the CCPO. Um, with respect to the bylaws, um, the work group uh, met on March 28th. We reviewed and discussed and revised a, uh, a second version of the bylaws that we had received from, um, from the city. And um, then we, fo we uh, forwarded that, uh, shared the document with our uh, partners in the city. And uh, on March 29th, we had a uh, very productive meeting with the city attorney, the city clerk, uh, the COO, and others, and really uh, appreciated their, their help, their thoughtful um, guidance, uh, thoughtful criticism of uh, some of our ideas. And uh, we ended up in a, a place where we pretty much reached consensus on what the uh, the bylaws for this commission would look like. Um, those have since been um, shared uh, electronically through our agenda. And um, I don't think that uh, there were any printouts for this meeting, um, but they were attached, I believe, to the agenda. And uh, I have a hard copy, but I think the, the next um, step in that process would be for the commissioners to review those bylaws um, and we place it as an item on our next uh, agenda to approve the bylaws. So they are available now, If, um, but there's not a hard copy here. If uh, anybody would like a um, a, a copy that, and they weren't able to to download them from from the agenda. Um, I'd be happy to to uh, make a copy available. Got to turn it on. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. Are there any questions about the governance work group report or the draft bylaws that were attached to the agenda? Seeing none, thank you very much for your work. Oh, I will note that there is a, a comment on the governance work group report. Uh, gonna... The governance work group has only three members and we would welcome an additional volunteer, so. <laughs> Yes, we, we lost one member uh, when one of the commissioners resigned. Um, I, I would uh, say thanks to Commissioner Clement and Chair Dido Swinton for their work on, on this work group. Um, it's been really helpful, but we would welcome additional assistance. Thank you. Wanted to make sure I shared that. Uh, Vice Chair Reeves, was it, oh, I thought you had your hand up. Okay. Is that a hand up? Yes. Commissioner Gurian, Chairman. Uh, is it appropriate at this time to address the issue of the uh, the changes to the CCP ordinance that the governance con committee is um, considering? Sure. Let me uh, give you a report on that. That is also in the. It was behind the queue on the on the bylaws, so it is now um, with uh, the group of city advisors. We're um, awaiting uh, it, formal input from them, and uh, I would uh, anticipate we'd be able to schedule a work group meeting with that that same group and have a similar process where we we hash through uh, some of the questions and suggestions and um, be able to bring something back to the commission. Thank you. 
May I comment on that? Sure. Thank you. We've been working, I've been presenting this ordinance for six months, the revisions. We started this in October. I, I presented ordinance revisions as a way to compromise the disagreements that we originally had about training and whether or not it was in fact required for our commission responsibilities and our uh, police uh, review panel responsibilities. It went into a few more things. I'm trying to find out why after six months we still don't have the city uh, response on reviewing it and, and why we cannot be going forward on this. I'm, I, I understand it got on the back queue to the bylaws, but this is six months now. And the problem is, the concern and the challenge is, that Council Member Elliot Payne has put the CCPO ordinance, uh, has sent that to a committee for revision, specifically to determine if the city wants to support having the commission uh, make not recommendations, but actual determinations in police review panels. And if we keep pushing this back, we are not going to be coordinating the changes. <laughs> so I appreciate that uh, there'll be yet one more committee meeting, and I appreciate the work being done, but is there a commitment that we will have something to vote on at the May meeting? Madam Are, Chair, you asked. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, Commissioner, just to sort of frame up a response, I know the city attorney wishes to speak as well, so I'll defer to Mr. Fussy on the technicalities, but overall in terms of what uh, is happening at the council level, uh, Commissioner Gurian Sherman is correct. Council President Payne has introduced a proposed ordinance that has not been drafted yet. It's been referred to the committee that has oversight and the committee has referred that forward to staff. So that process has just begun. Um, there are no details uh, yet available in terms of what the scope of any amendments that might be considered by the City Council with respect to the enabling ordinance for the Community Commission on Police Oversight might be. So I want to be clear that that is an un formed yet proposal. It simply has been introduced and referred to staff and will come forward through the normal course of the legislative process at the council level. So I just wanted to speak to the council process that although notice was given and it was formally introduced and referred to the committee with oversight, no further work has, has moved forward on that at the council's level. And I know Mr. Fussy would then um, address this body's work. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner Olson, commissioners, um, city clerk certainly is correct on the process and where it stands with the city council right now. Uh, the bulk of the kind of internal staff work that's been done recently uh, cross departmentally and with uh, the committee has dealt with the bylaws and we've successfully come upon a, uh, a, a draft of that, a working draft of that that we hope can be adopted at your next meeting. Um, in internal discussions with my office, and in particular in light of looking at the authority that the uh, this commission has, and also looking at the general authority of how ordinance drafting works in the city, in which the council author has the responsibility for authoring ordinance amendments or specific ordinance amendment la language with the council in consultation or, or, or by the city attorney who has the authority to uh, finalize or to bring those ideas into the actual uh, ordinance amendment form. Um, it's been our determination that the best and probably most efficient way forward to provide this body a voice in that process is to allow, is for you to make comments essentially to the council member who has introduced the topic. Those comments could be uh, essentially a list of what areas or what things you would like to see accomplished in his ordinance draft. This body does not have the authority to change the ordinance, and it doesn't have the authority, specific authority, um, with regard to ordinances at all within your, your charge. But I think what you can do, and which would probably be quicker and more effective and get that information in your resolved um, ideas in the council member's hands as he, the council president's hand as as he develops an ordinance is to adopt uh, a resolution or simply a listing of uh, of what you would like to see in any ordin ordinance amendment, whether that be additions to the ordinance, deletions, changes, anything along those lines. And in that respect, you're not um, you're, you're not arguing over specific commas and word choice and underlined language and stricken language, but you're giving your 
your body's interpretation of what you would like to see. And that would be taken to, into account by the council president when he drafts uh, the ordinance with the assistance of our office. Thank you. And Madam Chair, if I could just finish that um, comment by saying what you just adopted in the way of a resolution setting forth priorities is exactly the way I think Mr. Fussy was suggesting. In the form of a resolution adopted by a majority vote of this body, final, you know, final review would be the, the proper method to submit to the mayor and council through the council president, who's the author. Here are our proposed recommendations. These are our ideas for how to improve the enabling ordinance that creates the CCPO. And certainly staff at this level can assist in that effort, pulling those ideas into the form of a resolution that could then be adopted by this body. Thank you. So I have a question, uh, Commissioner Olson. Would this, uh, given this information at about us, the ability for us to uh, adopt a resolution with the things that we would like to see changed in the ordinance. Does between now and whatever, May 13, does that give you time? Because you've gotten the work group's thoughts on the ordinance. Does that give you time to draft a resolution a dra to present to the commission for the entire commission to weigh in on their thoughts? Yeah. That's a really good question. Um, the the draft ordinance was was um, had had a lot of language that um, w was very specific on what was you know what Commissioner Ger uh, Gary and Sherman wanted to see um, to draft a resolution um, at a more high concept level seems like a little bit of work to me. Okay. Um, I don't know if I we can get our work group to, to have something effective like that by May, May 13th. Okay. Um, we can try. That, that's fair enough. If you could try, that'd be great. If you, you know, give it your valiant effort and come a little short, um, we'll figure it out from there. Certainly. And, and Madam Chair, to that point, I would just offer, uh, sorry to keep speaking, the the fact is, the matter, as I said, is this ordinance has been introduced and referred, but there isn't a draft yet. So I don't think that we're on a timeline at the council level where a May-June timeline by this okay. body to finalize a resolution is going to put any jeopardy on getting those um, ideas as input to the council. Okay, thank you. We will keep that in mind, um, but we'll work toward a May 13 draft resolution. And if, if we see that, you know, as we're setting the agenda for May, that that's not feasible, then we'll, we'll, we won't put it on the agenda. That sounds reasonable to me. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions um, for the governance work group? Yes. Commissioner Gurry and Chairman. Uh, since I authored the ordinance language, I'm happy to take a stab at uh, putting it into a resolution format and forwarding it to the governance committee as a starting place to go from an actual language of an ordinance to a resolution. I do want to say I appreciate um, City Clerk Casey Carl's uh, clarification on the process and where we're at with that. I'm a little frustrated, though, that uh, Mr. Fussy, that after six months of um, talking about this ordinance, you are just proposing tonight this resolution setting forth priorities. We could have been doing this months ago. And so I'm a little concerned to why we have this delay. But since we have it, and that's the reality, and I've authored the move to go forward on an ordinance, I'm happy to take a stab at an initial draft on a resolution and send it to the governance committee within a week. Thank you for the offer. I really appreciate it and happily <laughs> have you do that. Okay, thank you. Thank so you. You all will connect offline or online rather. <laughs> okay, if there are no additional questions for the governance work group, um, we will ask the city clerk to receive and file that report. Where are we? Madam Chair, I think yes. we're at the new business. Yes, thank you. I'm lost on my um, paper. Okay. 
Moving along. We're at new business now. I don't know of any. Is there any new business from commissioners? Seeing none. There's, oh, thank you. There's, oh, thank you. There is uh, no new business. Uh, so the next item on our, pardon my scatteredness. I have it. <laughs> thank you. Next, we'll accept comments from the public. So we'll take comments in the order that they uh, that speakers registered by signing in on the public comment sign-in sheet. Um, if you wish to address the commission tonight and haven't already done so, you can register with the clerks over on the side of the dais. Each speaker uh, will be given two minutes. There is a handy clock up there, so you'll know how your time is, um, how much time you have left. Um, if you have any materials to be included in the public record of this meeting, please give that to the clerks as well. And with that, our first speaker tonight is Dave Bicking. If you'll introduce yourself and tell us your ward or organization. Well, it's no surprise now that I'm Dave Bicking, um, Ward 8. Um, I work with the Communities United Against Police Brutality. Uh, frankly, I was going to pass on a public comment this time because um, I've been up here before, and Frank, look, looking at you know what you've been discussing tonight, people have clearly been putting in a lot of work and time and effort, and I appreciate that. But the uh, progress is still impeded by the original setup of the group, the ordinance, the city staff, et cetera, et cetera. I've gone into that in the past, it, um, so I, I remain with the unfortunate feeling that this is pretty hopeless. But now, <laughs> I, I had heard a rumor that there was a steering group, and now it's been um, confirmed. And um, once again, we have another body holding closed session meetings that is, um, you know, there was no decision by this body to have a steering group. There was no resolution. There was nothing to create that. It just happened. One of the norms of the meeting norms is to follow the will of the commission or the decisions of the commission. And as far as the meeting you're setting up, it is 10 days before the end of the term of some of these commissioners. A meeting for public input should have been held at the beginning of the year to hear from the public as to what you were going to do in the next year, not at the very end of the year. Just one more area where you have been stymied in your work and some of you have gone along with it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Chuck Turchik. There's a, as Mr. Turchik comes to the microphone, I'm going to state for him that we're passing out a piece of paper that accompanies his testimony. Thank you. Hi, Madam Chair, Chuck Turchik, Ward 6. In five days, it will be a complete year since the civilian oversight ordinance was revised. It will have been 16 months since the city council passed it, the mayor signed it, and it was published. The ordinance uh, section that I, that I uh, provided you is section 172.30C, and I refer you to the second sentence. Complaint, investigation, and disciplined records anonymized sufficiently to be provided consistent with the Minnesota statutes, section 13.43, and other applicable law shall be shared with the members of the Community Commission on Police Oversight. That hasn't been done once yet, and we're nearing a year that this commission will be, uh, or that the ordinance will be in effect. 
Uh, I have raised this a number of times. I raised it in my first comment that I made to you. The last time I raised it was in a February email that I copied you on. The email was sent to the interim director of the Civil Rights Department. So why is it important to have these anonymized records? Uh, this, this ordinance provision was suggested as an amendment by Councilmember Chugtai, and she wanted every commission member to have some anonymized summary of every single case that comes before the OPCR. It's important because you sit on maybe eight or nine panels each a year. You don't get to see enough cases to know what trends are. It's important because we members in the public have no transparency on what's happening with the OPCR unless the case is closed with discipline. And it's also important because the the uh, findings report of the Department of Justice had case after case of investigations committed by, done by the OPCR that they thought were inadequate. And those investigations were not ones that went to hearing panels. Overwhelmingly, they were ones that were dismissed at an earlier stage. So I encourage you, you asked in your uh, March resolution for all sorts of data to, present it, to be presented to you on a monthly basis. I urge you to ask for this provision of the ordinance to be uh, implemented immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Andrew. Hi, I'm hoping that you can ask for the following information when you get your reports. Uh, in the March report, there was a really there was a very brief flowchart of the complaint process. I would love to see if you guys could request a much more thorough uh, a flowchart of that, in including what happens after it gets to the chief's desk. Uh, second, looking at this month's report, we learned that there were 24 cases, three that went to coaching, two that went for further review, and 18 are pending. But after that, everything seems to hit a black hole. For instance, what about the 18 cases from March? Where are they? Something that might be useful is if you had different buckets uh, for how cases progressed, and then you had a list. Um, nine cases in coaching, six from this month, three from last month, and just have the months by them. I think that would be very helpful for, uh, for us to know what's going on. And then also one more thing, looking at the statute, 172.20C1, it talks about having the information for the date the complaint, the, the incident happened. And I think that's really important to know how many of these that are coming in fresh are from old instances or new. They also say the date that the complainant was interviewed and the date the officer was interviewed. I think that would be really helpful information. You can't expect people or the officers to give a good accounting of what happened if you're interviewing a year after the fact. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we have has anyone else no okay with that we've completed all um, items on our agenda I want to express appreciation on behalf of CCPO to staff and staff up here and the staff who's also um, in the audience and Alifa for um, attending our meeting tonight and I'll note for the public and for commissioners that our next regular meeting is set for Monday May 13 beginning at 6 o'clock in this chamber and with that and without any objection the Commission stand adjourned stands adjourned good night everyone <laughs>